I've been a one bag traveler for several years now and believe it or not, this is how I used to pack for a long weekend trip. I'm sure there are a bunch of people out there that are in a similar situation to this here. So I thought it would be a fun experiment as I round out month three of being at home to take you through kind of a basic long weekend travel loadout and some easy ways to shave weight and save space so you can get started with one bag travel or pick up a few new tips and tricks if you already are. So without any further ado, I'm just gonna kinda go category by category here and call out all of the stuff I don't need. So starting off with clothes as the first category, this imaginary trip we're planning is for three nights and four days. So think a Thursday through Sunday long weekend trip. That's often what I do a couple times a year to go back to Michigan and visit my family. Uh, so assuming I'm going to have on you know, a basic t-shirt, jeans, and a pair of shoes for the plane. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to pack an extra pair of shoes. Say you think, you know, maybe I'll wanna wear something nice out one night out to dinner. You probably don't need a second pair of shoes. I'm just gonna get rid of this immediately. Try and find a pair of shoes that are gonna work for a wide array of different scenarios. Something that is gonna be casual enough to wear with jeans and a t-shirt, but might look nice enough if you wanna go out to a nicer dinner or something. And if you have to pack two pairs of shoes, pack the smaller pair and wear the bigger, bulkier pair on the plane. So getting rid of those shoes first off, easiest, biggest thing you can cull out of your pack. Next up, we have pants. So we're going, we need to pack for three days essentially. So I have here three pairs of jeans on top of the ones I would normally wear get rid of all of them. Hear me out, I'm someone that likes to wear my pants multiple times before washing for a number of reasons. One, it's gonna make your pants last a lot longer. Two, your pants really aren't getting dirty if you're wearing underwear and bathing on a regular basis. And people think they need to change their wardrobe out completely on every trip every day, and sometimes even pack an extra pair of pants just in case you wanna change things up. I have recently started Started getting into some more technical and travel friendly fabrics. Uh, these are the slim dungarees from Outlier. You don't have to have you know a fancier pair of pants like this to wear but these are my first pair of travel pants and they're amazing. Um, these will get me through the whole trip without having to change pants so four days is totally reasonable. These are stain resistant and odor resistant and even if you have a regular pair of jeans you really should be able to get four wears out of a pair of jeans. And, and pack one extra if you need, but you know something like this I would wear on the plane with me and I wouldn't pack any other pants. And then moving on from there, you know, say you're someone that likes to work out and you wanna have a pair of sleeping pants, so I have two pairs of um, you know just basic gym shorts. I don't know about you, but the chances of me going to a gym and getting on a full sweaty workout while I'm on vacation is pretty slim. A lot of people like to think, you know, I'm gonna work out this trip and I'm gonna pack this stuff just so I can be prepared and be healthy. If you're not gonna work out, don't pack this stuff. Be realistic and honest with yourself when you're packing. The other thing, you know, I am someone that sleeps in basketball shorts usually or has them around the house in the evenings. You know, maybe you can work out in these and sleep in these if you're someone that's not getting very sweaty when you're working out. So this is really all I need extra that I'm not going to be wearing on the plane for that short of a trip. We're gonna put these back up here. Next thing is a sweatshirt. You know, it might get cold, I better pack a sweatshirt. Wear this on the plane with you instead of packing it. It's big, it's bulky. The nice thing with wearing it is that if you want a pillow or a blanket while you're traveling, it works as a great double purpose outside of getting rid of it out of your pack. So just put this on before you leave for the airport or before you load up your car if it's a road trip. Moving on to shirts. So we have three days plus workouts, plus sleeping, plus, you know, a what if nice dinner type of shirt. So you don't need very many of these either. A uh, big thing that I have recently started to get into with those more technical travel pants is merino wool. Merino wool is an amazing fabric. It really is odor resistant and it's going to last multiple wears between washes. Uh, so you can really get away with probably two merino wool shirts if you have them for the entirety of the trip. 
It's also something that's really great for insulating and staying cool or warm in different climates. So the Merino wool stuff, if you can get your hands on it, is amazing. This is also from Outlier. They sell those together in what's called a travel pack. Uh, this isn't sponsored by them, but they did send me those out to test and try. Been very impressed so far. But rounding back to the rest of the t-shirts here, you don't need a new t-shirt for every day, plus a sleep shirt, plus a workout shirt, plus an extra. You know, plan on wearing your shirts out a couple days in a row. So we have, you know, four days, I'm gonna pack one shirt and I'm gonna wear one shirt and I'm gonna pack one extra shirt to sleep in. I'm gonna get rid of the workout shirt and I'm gonna get rid of the extra shirts just in case. And I'm gonna be honest with myself, I'm not gonna wanna dress up when I go out to dinner, so I'm gonna get rid of my button-up shirt as well. So culling down here, we have a sleep shirt and a day shirt. You have the one on your back plus the extra. It's gonna be more than enough. You can rewear them twice and they'll be smelling just fine. Moving on from there, we have socks and underwear. Socks, again, merino wool is gonna wear multiple times without smelling or having any odor. It's also going to be able to wash out really quickly and dry really quickly. So if you do need to wash them really quickly in a sink for some reason, you can. These are both two different styles of smart wool socks. I'm gonna be packing these and getting rid of the extras. You know, if I'm not out backpacking, I'm not gonna be super cautious about socks. Um, just for normal like city travel you know, a couple pairs of merino wool socks are gonna do you amazingly. Same goes for underwear, except I don't have any fancy technical travel underwear, so I am going to pack one pair for each day and I'm gonna get rid of the extra. All the years I've been traveling, I've never needed my extra pair of underwear, so I'm gonna ditch this and go down to the three that I actually need. These are from Tommy John. They're a micromodal from what I remember. I bought these years ago. They have held up incredibly and they're very comfortable, but they are not that merino wool, so I wanna be able to wear and switch these out every day. Um, so culling down all of that clothes, this is all you really need for that long weekend sort of trip. It seems crazy, but I promise if you give it a shot, it's going to be a much more pleasant travel experience not to have to lug around all that extra stuff. So that's kind of the first category there. We've culled most of what we're going to cull though. I'm gonna shift this over here and move on to the next category and that is tech. I run my own business, I'm on my laptop quite a bit. If I'm on a really short casual trip, I've been recently trying to go more with just using my phone much, much easier and a lot less cumbersome than having my laptop. So I'm gonna bring my phone with me and I'm going to skip out on the laptop. This is gonna be something that's different for everyone. You might not have the option, but more and more as technology advances, we can do more and more work on our phones. So I'm gonna leave this at home, as crazy as that sounds, and uh, just focus on this. And I didn't put this in the layout here, but same goes for DSLRs and bigger cameras like this. Lately on my normal vacations, you know, I'm not doing a ton of photography, so I've just been leaving it at home and it makes it for a lot lighter, more pleasant experience. So I'm gonna pack this and I'm gonna need a charger for that as well. And then moving on from there, headphones. You know, people like these big noise canceling headphones for the plane. They're so big and bulky. I just travel with AirPods. The sound quality is not quite as good, being completely honest, but the size difference is just insane. Um, I just can't put myself up to wearing these out. I usually edit my videos in these. They're not that great of video editing headphones. They're more meant for travel, but they're just so big and bulky. I haven't ever brought them on a trip with me. They're just too big. Uh, so I'm gonna bring these, and I can also use the same charger for my phone for the headphones I'm gonna bring. And then outside of that, you know, I bring a Kindle sometimes, but I don't half the time end up getting the chance to read, so I'm gonna leave this at home too. A lot of this quick sidestep, a lot of this is about being honest with yourself. You know, maybe I'll wear this outfit, maybe I'll get a chance to read. Be realistic, if you're not going to use it, don't bring it. So leave this at home too. And because of that, we can leave some extra chargers. I am going to pack my external battery. That's still a pretty important piece for me. So we're gonna downgrade the tech to these few items here instead. 
And because of that, we don't need to bring all of this extra junk. So getting rid of all the extra chargers and dongles. Look at how much we've pulled down. See how easy this is. It just takes some experience and practice and uh, you live and you learn and you kind of test and try the more trips that you go on. Because I moved out to Portland a few years ago, like I said, I go on a lot of these long weekend type of trips. So I've had a lot of experience for the shorter stints of travel to know what I need and don't need. So next up we have DOP kit. <laughs> this is another one. This pack here is my old toiletry DOP kit bag that I used to have. You know, I got this when I was like 12 years old. Um, but I have in here a ton of stuff. I'm just gonna kind of dump everything out and explain. And I thought the best way to demonstrate this was just to show you my new DOP kit and explain how I uh, swap this out. So this is all the stuff that you know a regular person might want to bring with them on a trip. You know, you have your toothbrush and toothpaste and deodorant. Um, I don't have shaving equipment, but I have beard oil and a brush, uh, shampoo, body wash, sunscreen, ibuprofen in case you get headaches, um, you know, allergy medicine. I have really bad allergies. You know, just in case I get a hangnail, I better bring my nail clippers. You don't need most of this stuff. Grabbing my new DOP kit, let me just um, move some of this stuff out of the way. So deodorant, I still have deodorant. Um, I haven't gotten the chance to really test the dry deodorants. I've tried to go without deodorant and I just can't do it. I've tried the crystal deodorants and I couldn't do that either. Um, I end up just stinking too much. So I still do travel with regular deodorant. Instead of bringing a big thing of ibuprofen and a big thing of allergy pills, Get one of these smaller reusable pill bottles. You can put a couple of ibuprofen in here. You can put a couple of vitamins. If you normally travel with vitamins, put some allergy meds in here. This nice little tube is going to be able to house all of the pills you might need for your trip. So you can ditch this stuff. I'm gonna pull this out as well off to the side. And instead of, if you're a bearded gentleman, um, instead of this big brush, you know, go with a little bit of a smaller comb here. The form factor is just much easier to pack. So we're gonna move that out of the way. And um, this next one is big. So this is Dr. Bronner's. This is one of those like 18 in one type of soaps. And I absolutely love it for traveling because this bottle of soap here is able to replace my toothpaste, my shampoo, my body wash, all of that stuff is gone for this one little bottle. You know, you can get these smaller containers and then you can get a big one to refill it so you're not having to buy a bunch of little plastic bottles all the time. They're refillable and great. Moving on from there, we have sunscreen. I burn in like 10 minutes out in the sun. So you might not need sunscreen, but I am constantly worried about sunscreen when I travel. Instead of bringing the big bottle, Nalgene makes these little one and two ounce bottles that are like $1.15. And uh, they're much smaller. You can refill them again and travel with this. Much lighter, much easier. So you can get that out of the way too. Toothbrush. This was a newer purchase of mine uh, several months ago that I'm just stoked on. A foldable toothbrush. Toothbrushes are big and bulky and annoying to travel with. And uh, yeah, this one's just really lightweight and foldable, which is very nice. Beard oil is another one of those things. I normally like to use this when I'm at home, but realistically, three or four days, I can go without without any real bad repercussions. I can still comb my beard, and I'll just continue my oiling regimen when I get home. Nail clippers, you don't need nail clippers for three days. Just skip it. Um, big toothbrush, you can skip that. So all of this stuff is all this extra junk that you probably don't need to pack with you. So just skip all of this. I'm just gonna... That was really loud. <laughs> Sorry to my neighbors below me. So let me get this pack back up here. So those are the main categories I felt like would have the biggest savings on what you can skip. As you can see here, it's just much easier and smaller. And uh, this is gonna fit in a backpack really nicely. You know, this is barely anything, practically. You can fit a 15 liter backpack, you can travel for three days with it. And I am missing a few things like my water bottle, but I just wanted to focus on those categories that had the biggest impact. You know, the less that you have with you when you travel, the less burden you're gonna have to deal with and the less hassle you're gonna have to deal with, which will allow you to travel more freely and move around more freely, 
explore the city that you're in or explore the country that you're in and uh, it just makes things a little bit more enjoyable. It's a more extreme version of minimalism in everyday life. The less that you have, the less responsibility that you're going to have to deal with with having and owning those items. So these are some of the ways I save weight when I travel. Hopefully you learned a couple of new tricks. I'd love to hear though what you do down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next week. Have a good one.